Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. A blessed Father in heaven, we thank you again for today. Thank you for all you have done for us from the last Wednesday when we met till today. We give you all the praise and all the glory for your protections, for your provisions, for your preservations. Thank you for your light shining on us, your glory. Thank you, Lord, for what you have willed for us. It is our desire, mighty God, that only your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your will, alone be done in our lives. Lord, as we go on to study your word tonight, speak to our hearts. Grant us that grace to truly understand what your will is for us. That we may lead ourselves to your will and expect that only your will that is good and perfect will stand in our lives, irrespective of what the enemies and all that we may desire for us in Jesus' mighty name. Take all the glory and all the honor, Lord, for all you've done tonight. We say, Lord, because in your presence there is healing, there is power, there is peace. May you cause healing and mind to flow tonight. May you set captives free tonight. May you deliver the oppressed tonight. May you command the blessings to come upon your children as we receive your word of God. Thank you for answer to this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So welcome to another midweek service. Hallelujah. I know a lot has happened. Amen. And a lot is also happening right now in the realm of the spirits. But nevertheless, God is on the throne. Hallelujah. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. That is one good thing, and that is what should encourage us, encourage you. That the Lord our God never sleeps, he never slumbers. There is nothing, and I mean, there is nothing going on anywhere, whether in the heavens or on the earth, in the ocean, in the mind of any human being or any creature that God is not aware of. Child of God, nothing takes him by surprise. Hallelujah. He's able to bring to naught the counsel of the wicked. He's able to frustrate the plan of the wicked. So, child of God, when we know what his will is for us, and we put ourselves in a place where he will do his will, then, child of God, <laughs> It becomes a matter of you putting yourself in a place where we'll enjoy the peace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And then where you can also live that life of thankfulness. Amen. Knowing that God is on the throne. So as I said, so we're going to continue with the will of God. This is going to be the sixth session. Part six. Last week we saw how God changed the will. Okay, we God changed the will of that was Sennacherib. <laughs> Sennacherib, who wanted to destroy the children of Israel, you know, destroy Judah in the days of Hezekiah. Okay, who went and sorted God, you know, talk rubbish and all those stuff. And the truth is that it's only people who don't know God that talk nonsense about God. It's only people who don't know God that think that they can do whatever they want to do and get away with it. You understand? But when you know God, <laughs> when you know who God is, then it will help you to, to live your life in line with his will. Thank you, Jesus. So today we are going to see how God changed the will of a beast, or not a beast, beasts, the will of beasts, the will of men. Amen. 
in the days of Daniel. But before this, I will say to you again, that you understanding the will of God for you, understanding what the will of God for is for you in any situation, because that is why God, the scripture says that God wants us to be filled with the knowledge of his will. It's very important, child of God. So when, they, when you are asked to read the scriptures, when you are encouraged to study the Bible, you know, don't think it's just, it's just for storytelling. Uh, just for you to know. No. It's not just for you to know. It's for you to understand basically what the will of God is for you. The thoughts, the mind of God concerning your life. And how to put yourself in a place where God will desire to, to perform his will in your life. Amen. So, it is the will of God according to scripture that you should be filled, we should be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, in all wisdom, in all spiritual understanding, he said, for what purpose? That he said that we might be filled with the knowledge of God, increased in the knowledge of God, that we might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, to walk worthy of the Lord. Of course, you can't please a man without understanding or knowing what he likes or loves or hates. So when you understand the will of God, then you will to walk only your few months to all pleasing. We understand that without faith, it's impossible to please God. But faith must be based on the word of God. You don't just act faith, you know. You say, I believe God. You believe God in what area? So you must know the will of God, have knowledge of his will. And, the, and your faith, therefore, must act on that knowledge. So that you can be pleasing to God. Your ways, your actions can be pleasing to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So, child of God, God wants us to be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and all spiritual understanding. All wisdom, all spiritual understanding. He said that we might be filled, okay, First, we have to walk worthy of human to please, auto pleasing. We must feel, be filled with his knowledge, and then we must be fruitful. Be fruitful unto every good work. We must be fruitful unto every good work. Thank you, Jesus. Now, when you know this will and you understand it for you in any situation, child of God, it will keep you in, in peace. <laughs> What I mean is that when you understand that this is the will of God for me in this area, it doesn't matter what is happening. You're going to have peace in your heart. You'll have peace. When you understand that this is the will of God for you, that God wills that you should live and not die. So it doesn't matter what the enemies are planning to do to you. Because you know that there is no way the will of man can prevail over the will of God. There is no way the will of Satan can prevail. Of course, we have seen that at the beginning. How Satan willed. In fact, he, I think he went too far. He willed to even overthrow God. He willed to become like God, like, like the most high God. But nobody can take the place of God. And God said to Satan, You shall be brought down to hell and even to the sound of the pit. And the interesting thing is that when God speaks, it is done. When he commands, it's established. So when God says you are blessed, child of God, you are blessed. If, it's, if you don't experience the blessing now, it's just a matter of time. The blessing will surely come to pass because the word of God does not return to God void. So, understanding the will of God for you in any situation will keep you in peace and will help you to live a life of thankfulness. It will help you to live a life of thankfulness that you, you become grateful to God, knowing that. You see, when you are being grateful to God in any situation, particularly in an unpleasant situation, it is not that you like the situation. You are grateful to God because you know God is working out his own will, which is good and perfect. That is why I say in every situation we should give what? We should give thanks for this is the will of God. 
Not that it's the will of God for you to suffer and be destroyed. No. Amen. It is the will of God. You have to pass through the process. Because testimonies will come from the trials. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So God will not disappoint you. You know that God will never disappoint you. Now, we see what encouraged Jesus. Another example of where you understand what the will of God is for you. The Lord Jesus Christ knew the will of the Father concerning him. You know, first of all, like we say, humanly speaking, you know, the human part of his own, the, his own human part, human part of him did not ordinarily want to go to the cross to die. Nobody wants to die. Particularly the death of the cross. When you be nailed to the cross, pains, you know, but he prayed to the Father. And he said, if it was, if it were possible, let the Father take that cup of death from him. That cup he was talking about was death. If it were possible, let the cup pass away from him. But never, not his will, never not his will, but let the will of the Father. Now, the will of the Father was for him to go through that death, go through that cross, so that in dying, we will live, we will be set free from the power, the control, the dominion of Satan. Amen. But he knew that, he also knew that hell and death were not going to keep him forever. As we shall see in the scripture. John had the scripture in the book of Hebrews again. He said for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. There was a joy, there was joy he was looking at at the end. At the end of the tunnel, there was joy waiting for him. At the end of the dark tunnel, there was joy. So he was looking at the joy at the end of the dark tunnel of death. So that was what kept him, you know, sustained him on the cross. And indeed, the Father did not disappoint him. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 2, I read from verse 30, verse 22. He said, you men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourself know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and the foreknowledge of God, delivered. He was delivered. His death was not by an accident, no. It was pre-planned, arranged by God. And the devil did not know it. Because the scripture said that if the prince of this world had known that this was a bait, Jesus was a bait to destroy him. The Bible said they will not have crucified a lot of glory. The devil didn't know because he doesn't know everything. God is the only omniscience. In fact, let me say to you, that is why sometimes you, you need to have secrets because so some of the things the devil know about you is the, are the things that you reveal to him. The things you say with your mouth. The devil is not omniscience. So he's limited. So what he knows about you is what he has heard of you. Even the familiar spirits, they are familiar with your antecedent. They are familiar with your past life. So they can use the past to want to predict your future. But that is not the way of God. As we speak now, God already knows the future. The devil does not know the future. Hallelujah. But the devil, through, through his familiarity with your past and with what you have spoken, is able to deduce what will happen tomorrow. So he guesses. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So what am I trying to say? That the death of Jesus Christ was predetermined. That the creature tells us 
He said he was delivered by the determinate counsel and the foreknowledge of God. God knew about it. God arranged it. He said, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God had raised up, being loose from the pains of death, being loose from the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Death could not hold him down. It's not possible. So God planned that he, he will not spend, in fact, Jesus Christ himself, in many, in many scriptures, talked about how long he was going to stay in the control of death. First, he spoke to the people, they didn't know what talking about himself. When he said, let them destroy the temple, he will build it back in three days. The Bible said that he was talking about his death, but people didn't know. People were thinking about, oh, yeah, he was talking about the temple, the physical temple. He talked about how Jonah was in the belly of the whales. He said, so also shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth. So he knew how long he was going to stay based on the will of God. That God the Father was not going to allow hell and death to keep him forever. So when you know the will of God, it will help you, keep you in peace, and then make you to be thankful to God, knowing that God is working out something on your behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said for David's Speak it concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice. And my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell. <laughs> look, look at that. David was speaking. Jesus was not born. But David was speaking prophetically about Jesus. We were going to see this. Jesus was not born yet. He had not come yet. But David said, he said what? He said, he, he, he said, he said look, look at it again. He said, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For this on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. That's exactly what I'm saying. When you understand the will of God, you'll be glad. My tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Okay? Because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou will not leave my soul in hell. Child of God, God is not going to leave you permanently in this, that situation which you consider to be unpleasant. God is not going to leave you there. You are, you are come out of it by the grace of God. It's temporary. Your condition is not permanent. That condition right now, that unpleasant condition right now is not permanent, child of God. The enemies may be thinking, oh, they have gotten you. They have gotten her. They have gotten him. They have gotten the, they are, oh, they are, they are in their possession. Listen to me. That was how they rejoiced. When Jesus was crucified and buried, and the soul of the Lord was taken to hell, they rejoiced. All the hosts of darkness rejoiced. And I want to get that they, they maybe they held parties rejoicing in hell. Yes, we have gotten him because they did not understand what the will of God is. Because they thought that, well, forever and ever, Jesus was going to be in their camp. Well, but God did not allow that to be. And may the Father never allow the enemy to rejoice over you, over his name in your life, permanently in the name of Jesus. Every power that is holding you down now, may the Lord break them. All the counsel of the end, the will of the end to devour, to destroy, to frost, may the Lord overturn them. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, Thou will not see the Holy One. Verse 28 says, Thou hast made 
known to me the ways of life. May the Lord make you know the ways of life, child of God. This will be difficult. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. God is working out something, child of God, for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. That's the will of God for you too. God will make you full of joy with his countenance. That is why, child of God, you, don't, you don't understand this. So that in whatever situation you are in, don't be grateful to God. You are not thanking God because you are enjoying what you are going through. You are thanking God because you know that he's working out your deliverance. He's working out your salvation. He's working out your prosperity, working out your promotion. He's working out your, your healing. God is working out something great and mighty for you. That is what you are, that is why you are thanking God. We saw that in the case of Paul. <coughs> Excuse me. We saw that in the case of Paul. Okay? When Paul had to pray to the Lord, according to the scripture, he said he prayed to the Lord three times that the tongue in the flesh would be taken away from him. But what did God answer him? God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. That grace to, to hold on, that grace to hold on in the time of affliction. In other words, you are carrying the load. You are going through pain, but as though you are not going through pain, the grace of God is helping you to, to cushion the pain, waiting for the day or the manifestation of your deliverance. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 29 says, Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the Petra, David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, be the prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loin, according to the flesh, he will raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, seeing this before, by the word of wisdom. Seen this before. Okay? He saw this before Christ was born. Seen this before. Speak of the resurrection of Christ. That his soul was not left in hell. Neither his flesh did see corruption. Hallelujah. <laughs> the enemy will be rejoicing. But child of God, you are going to laugh last. You will laugh last. You will laugh at the enemies last. In fact, begin to laugh at them. Because if they know that God that you are serving, that the Lord God Almighty you are worshipping, is not going to leave you permanently in their hand, they will not touch you. But that God may disgrace them and put them to shame. And that God may receive glory in your life. That is why God is allowing to go through the period, these challenges you are going through. So whatever you are going to right now shall turn out for your own good, shall turn out for the glory of God. It shall bring glory to God. It shall bring glory to God. Just imagine that tomorrow you are going to come up to say, look, oh, if you knew the problem I had yesterday, but in all of it, God healed me. That's testimony. Oh, if you knew the challenge I had yesterday, in fact, in fact, yesterday, in fact, a few months back, it was like hell was let loose against me. But in all of it, God brought me out. That's a testimony. God is going to be glorified. And so whatever you are going through right now, child of God, I pray that the Lord God Almighty be glorified in your life. That God will turn those trials into testimonies in your life. That God will turn those problems into praises to God in your life. Hallelujah. And may the Lord alone be glorified. May Satan never be glorified in your life. They can plan and they will say they don't know the God. They don't know but you see them. <laughs> Let's move on, child of God. So your faith in God, know this child of God. That is why you must be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. In faith, be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. Be, let your faith be strong in the Lord. Your faith should be strong in the Lord. Your faith in God 
is what we make God to move on your behalf. Your faith in Him is what we make Him to move on your behalf. To reverse, to alter, to undo, or frustrate whatever the enemies have willed to do against you or have done. Or have done. Did the enemy do something to Jesus? Yes. Did the Lord Almighty undo it? Yes. The Bible says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifest to undo whatever the enemies have done. So whatever the enemy have done in your life, I pray in the will of God that may the Lord undo those things the devils have done in your life. May God, according to his will, undo them. Whatever Satan has done or whatever they will to do, may the Lord undo them, may the Lord frustrate them, may the Lord reverse them. So believe God, child of God. Trust God and hold on to him. Hold on to him. The will of any hungry and wild beast, for example, the will of any hungry and wild beast, like lions, will be to devour their prey. To devour any prey they seize or thrown at them. But God Almighty change the will of such beasts as he did in the days of Daniel, that they could not harm him, they could not eat him. May this same God change the will of any wild beasts. May this same God change the will of Satan. May this same God change the will, alter the will, alter the decrees, the laws of the wicked, that have been passed over your life, over your finances, over your business, over your job. Whatever sentence, whatever pronouncement, decrees, whatever enchantment, whatever divination that have been declared over your life, over your business, over your banking account, over your, over your health, over your job, over your marriage, over whatever, over your projects, the Lord God Almighty, that alter the laws of the ladies and patients which they say cannot be altered. May the Lord alter all such and put your enemies to shame in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord reverse such decrees and laws which they say can, ah, they can, ah, they, once this thing happens, it can never be changed. There is nothing God cannot change. Our God is known as the unchangeable changer. He's the unchanged. There is nothing God cannot change. No situation He cannot change. Nothing is too difficult for Him. There is nothing the wicked have done that God cannot undo. Imagine bones that were dead, dried, separated from their main body. Yeah? God brought them back together, bone locating the body they came out from. Head locating the body they came out from. Finger locating the, bone, the, the body they came out from. And God put flesh upon them. And put the breath of life upon them. And they came up. A mighty army. So it doesn't matter what the enemy has done. God is able to undo them. To reverse them. God is able to bring back to life that which was dead. He raised Jesus back to life. He raised Lazarus back to life. He has been raising countless number of people back to life. So even if your business is dead, God is able to bring it back to life. And I speak to your business to come back to life. Your job is dead. I speak to your job to come back to life, to receive life. The enemy may consider you dead. There are people, they say they are walking corpses. But listen to me. Whether in the sight of the enemy are the walking corpse, you receive life for you shall live and not die. That death sentence over your life, the Lord reverse it in Jesus' mighty name. For you shall fulfill your number of days on the earth. The Bible says, who is it? Who is it that we say, die? And it comes to pass if the Lord does not command it. The commandment of the Lord for you is that you should live and not die, that you may do his will on the earth. Hallelujah. The Bible says, it's good pleasure of God. Good pleasure of God. Good pleasure of God. 
to recompense tribulation upon them that trouble you, that are troubling you. May the Lord recompense tribulation upon those principalities, those powers of darkness, those beasts, those satanic creatures, those dragons, those monsters. The Lord recompense tribulation. May the Lord turn down from heaven upon them. May the angel of the Lord pursue them, persecute them, and send them back to hell. For child of God, it's my prayer for anybody, any human being troubling you. <laughs> because they don't know what they are doing. We pray the Lord destroy that power of darkness in them. But may the Lord bring them to that place where they will acknowledge their wickedness and turn to the Lord in righteousness. May the Lord bless them because they don't know what they are doing. May the Lord open their eyes to know that you are untouchable. Nobody touches you and go free. Because God said, we beat down your enemies and play them that hate you, child of God. So rest in peace. Let the peace of God. God didn't say the enemy would not get. God even assured us. He assured you. He said, surely they will gather together against you, but not by him. So it doesn't matter. Let them be gathering. Anywhere they are gathering. In the ocean, in the rivers, in the heavens, on the earth. Anywhere in your place of business, in your family, anywhere in your business. Let them be gathering. Anywhere they are gathering, let them be gathering. But Lord said, as long as they gather together against you, but not by his permission, they will fall for your sake. So let them gather together. And by the word of the Lord, they all fall and be scattered in Jesus' mighty name. The will of God is that they will speak their word. The wicked will speak their word, but they will not stand. He said they will take counsel, they shall not stand. Why? Because the Lord is with you. Jehovah is with you. Most of God says to you, say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that you can boldly say, child of God, boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid of what the plans of the enemies are. I will not be afraid of what the counsel of the devils are. I will not be afraid of what the arrangements, all their manipulation, you know, manipulating people, you know, to work against you. Manipulating the mind of people against you, the Lord frustrate them. All of such satanic manipulation to manipulate people's mind to cause problems in your life. May the Lord disappoint the people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Their cancer will become the cancer of a heat of it. It shall become the cancer. It shall become like the cancer of 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 of, 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 of what the, uh, of uh, what that what that man. Yeah, <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> is it a human or whatever it's called? In the days of Esther, hmm? that took counsel to destroy, to exterminate the Jews. Hmm? But he counseled in his heart, the evil thoughts, his will to destroy the to destroy the Jews, turn back against him, and he was destroyed. Child of God, you don't need to just know God. Put yourself in a place where God will be pleased with you and fight for you. Amen. Now let's look at this example of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6. This is great. How God can change the will of both beasts. Hungry beasts for that matter. Hungry beasts, not only hungry, hungry, wild, wild. The Colans are wild animals. Hungry and wild animals. God change their will. Then the king, verse 16, I take from verse chapter 6, verse 16. Now he said, Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. The den of lions, not just the den of normal lions. The lions were stabbed so that the 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 food or the whatever that is their food, whatever food is thrown into their midst, they will rush it. So when Daniel will be thrown into their midst, into their den, they will rush Daniel and devour Daniel. He said, then cause cast into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, take note of this, thy God, whom thou servest continually, will deliver thee. I see this as a prophecy. The king was speaking prophetically 
not not because he willed to do that but he, he, he didn't mean he was speaking prophetically but he was saying it sarcastically you know against Daniel he just like someone just okay let me see how that your God will deliver you that God you are saying I want to see that God that will deliver you. just he waits and I carry your boasting nobody has nobody has delivered anybody out of his hand he talked about this, talked about the God of uh, these people, talk about, listen, there may be other gods, I don't care. There may be other gods, all I know that there is no other God other than Jehovah. The Lord God Almighty, he is the most high God, he's the only true and living God. All other gods, they are no God, they are idols. So, for Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, for him, like, let me see who is going to deliver him. Let me see it. Okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You don't joke with our God. Verse 17. And a stone was brought and laid in the, upon the mouth of the den. Remember also when Jesus Christ was buried, the king you know, all the soldiers, the king sent message to them and said, look, let's, let's, let the disciples who come and steal him in the night and say, you are risen. Let them put a stone on the mouth so that it will stop him from rising. <laughs> Listen to me. When God wants to do what he wants to do, nobody can stop it. The earth cannot even stop it. Grave cannot stop it. Talk more of a, or talk less of a ordinary stone that human beings use their hand to roll. <laughs> corruption, decay cannot stop God from putting new flesh upon the dead like he did in the days, like he did in the body of Lazarus whose body was already decomposed and stinking but God brought him, gave him back, gave him new flesh and brought him back to life you want to put a stone to see so that Daniel will not run out <laughs> now, they say what? And a stone was laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, with his own signature. Okay? And then with the signet of his lord, okay, the signs of his lord, okay, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. That the purpose might not be changed. He has signed it, so nobody can sign it. Now nobody can change it. Then the king went to his palace. And pass the night fasting. Can you imagine? There are people who also are fasting, demonic fasting. To tell you that even wicked people fast. Say, I want to see him die. I want to see him fail. I want to see him destroyed. I want to see his business fall. I want to see him. He will not get married. He will not get married. He will not be buried. Listen to me. It doesn't matter what you have sworn over your life. I say to you, God says no to the enemy. God, may God say no to them. All they have said, may God reverse. May the Lord frustrate. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? He came fasting because of one man, Daniel. Not fasting so that Daniel will be delivered, but fasting so that Daniel will be destroyed. Huh? He said the king <laughs> oh God, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments or music brought before him. And his sleep went from him. His sleep went from him. Mm. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of the, of the lions. Went in haste to see whether, whether Daniel had been consumed. <laughs> Yeah. That, is, that is how eager some, some people are. They are evil desires. They are eager to see you fall. But may the Lord disappoint them. The Lord that disappointed this king disappoint your enemies. Those who want to see you fall. Those who want to see you die. Those who want to see you barren. Those who want to see you disappointed. Those who want to see you lose your job. Lose your business. Lose your property. May the Lord disappoint them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who want to see you sorrow and be crying. May the Lord disappoint them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May the Lord disappoint them. May the most high God disappoint them. Huh? 
and he rushed to the den of lion in haste. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. He cried. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually. Take note of this, underline it in your Bible. Is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Daniel was not a wishy-washy Christian. Let me use the word Christian. He wasn't a wishy-washy servant of the Most High God. You know? He wasn't a, he wasn't a sluggard. He wasn't a sluggish. He wasn't a, a, lukewarm, a lukewarm servant of God. Hmm? Know this. Thank you, Jesus. His faith was strong. Don't forget what happened. The law was put that nobody should make petition to any other God apart from the king. That anybody would make petition. It's like saying nobody should go to church again. Nobody should go to church. Anybody who goes to church should be killed. The Bible said when they made the, they, when they made the decree, then I went to his house. You said we should not pray. Well, I may not pray publicly, but as he prayed in my house, he went to his house and opened the window. And did not diminish in the number of times you were used to praying. And they saw him. And he was praying to the same God. And they brought him before the king. We call this man. He disobeyed your commandment. And you have said, anybody who disobeys shall be thrown to the land of lions. And that was it. So the king said to him, O Daniel, servant of the Most High, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. <laughs> Daniel did not say, God, this man that threw me to the land that may kill him. That is why I say we pray for everyone who is troubling you. No, I'm not praying. We are not praying for Satan. We are not praying for demonic spirits. We are praying for people who have made themselves instruments in the hand of the devil because they don't know the God you are serving. They don't even understand you. May God deliver them from the lies that the devil has lied to them. The influence of the devil over the mind of those people that said they hate you. They don't want to see you. They don't want to see you prosper. They don't want to see you live. They want to see you fit. May the Lord deliver them. They don't know what they are doing. Yeah. Stephen said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. They don't know. The Bible said that a day will come where some people will be killing you and they will think they are doing God favor. And some of these people, you know, are working against you. Some of them may be in the church. Even in your family. They think they are doing God favor. They don't know they are working against the will of God concerning you. May God open their eyes to know that you are God's anointed. You are a servant of God. And it is not the will of God that anybody should trouble you. Amen. And may God deliver them from the power of that beast. The power of that witchcraft, marine witchcraft. May God deliver them and may God frustrate their lies. The devil has lied to them. May they be delivered that they may know God and serve God in Jesus' mighty name. May they live and not die because they have to see your blessings. They will live to see your joy. <laughs> they will live to see your joy. They will see to see your promotion. Yes. May God grant them to live to be one of those that will carry your testimony. <laughs> Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. He said, live, O king. That's what Daniel said. Live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth 
God said, He said, I saw the Lord in my own smile that they have not hurt me. More, more, for as much as before Him, innocence was found in me. Innocence was found in me. The Bible says, if you keep yourself, that wicked one will not touch you. If you keep yourself from idolatry, keep yourself from sin, that wicked one will not touch you. Because you say, he that breaketh the edge, the serpent will bite him. So don't break the hedge of God around you. Whether by doubt or by living a sinful life. Don't break the hedge of God. The Lord has a hedge. His own hedge around you. The Lord said he has made you a, a defense city. Not a defense city. You have made a brazen wall, an iron pillar, a coal of fire. The Lord said you are a flame of fire. You are a fire. You are light. Therefore, may the Lord himself defend you. And those demonic spirits, witchcraft, marine witchcraft, occultic power, those creatures, those beasts, those monsters, May the Lord turn down from heaven upon them that war against you, that trouble your life, that plan and plot evil against you. May the Lord frustrate their will, their expectations concerned be frustrated in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 23, he said, Then was a king exceeding glad for him. Amen. The same king that permitted Daniel to be, was not glad for him. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. I commanded that they should take Daniel out, up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. I said to you, your faith in God is what will provoke God to work on your behalf. Daniel believed in his God. Child of God, don't doubt God. Don't doubt our God. He doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber. Our God is the God that is upholding of him by the word of his power. The Lord is upholding you with the, by the right hand of his righteousness. God will not give up on you. So don't give up on yourself. The Lord will not give up on you. Daniel believed in his God. He said that God delivered him because he believed in his God. Child of God, believe in your God. Believe in his prophets. Believe in your God. Believe his prophets. Believe, the, believe that the word... That is, you are hearing now is from the is from the law to you. Believe it. Run with it. Serve the Lord in righteousness. Know the will of God concerning your life. Know what God wills for you. It is the will of God for you to prosper. So all the demons, all the hosts of darkness, working against, trying to make you poor, know that the will of God for you. It is the will of God for you to prosper. Why? Because Jesus will make poor for you, so that you through His power will become rich. So those who are seeking to make you suffer what the Lord your Christ suffered before, they are working against the will of God. So may the Lord disappoint them. You can't suffer the what Jesus Christ has suffered. He suffered poverty. He will make poor for you. He will make poor for us. So that we, through his poverty, might become rich. And now one demon spirit or agents or Satan, they say they want to make you poor. They want to destroy your business. They want to destroy your job. They want to destroy your career. They want to make you financially, you know. Whatever they think, he shall not stand. <laughs> he shall not stand. All the activities going on in the realm of the spirit, manipulating, setting up people against you at this time. May the Lord scatter them and may the Lord frustrate their counsel and their plans in Jesus' mighty name. They are not happy with your progress. They are not happy with your testimony. They are not happy with your glory. Of course, they will not be happy. Because the, 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 one of the characteristics of Satan is, is, is that what makes Satan happy is when you are crying. But may you not cry, child of God. May God not allow you to shed tears. Yes. That will make the devil to rejoice. May the Lord cause the wicked to, to be unhappy by promoting and protecting and blessing and lifting you higher and higher in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said, then was the king glad Huh? The king was glad. Thank you, Jesus. He said because he believed in his God. Hmm? And the king commanded, and they brought 
and, and, and they brought those men who had accused Daniel, who have accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of the of lions. Men, can you imagine? Daniel, the, the, the lions could not devour Daniel, but the people who accused Daniel, yeah, they brought them and their children and their wives. And the lion had a mastery of them. You know that the lion made feast of them, ate them up because they were hungry. <laughs> they were hungry. Huh? They were hungry. And break all their bones in pieces. Or ever they came out at the bottom of the den. They never, they never came out from the bottom of the den. The lion ate up everything. Then King Darius wrote unto all people. King Darius wrote unto all people, to nations to, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Amen. Amen. Somebody's testimony are brought about the king directing that everybody should now worship the God of Daniel. May your faith in God, may your faith in God, may your testimony also draw people to God in Jesus' mighty name. Your faith in God, your testimony, may it be so that will cause men to be drawn into the kingdom of our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Let's take that again. I make a decree that in every domain of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God. He is the living God. And set fast forever, and his king and his kingdom, mm, his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivered and rescued. Can you imagine this? King, the hidden kingdom, acknowledging the God of Daniel, say he delivered and rescued, and he worked signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Huh? Hmm. Who had delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? Child of God, why would not worship that God? Why would you not surrender to that God? Why would not you to that God? The God that walked wonders in heaven, on the earth, in the sea. God walked wonders everywhere. Child of God, yield yourself to Him and serve the Lord. The Lord God Almighty has changed, therefore, the will. Listen to me. How many times? Look, look, look at this. It wasn't just the lions, it was the will of the king that Daniel should be destroyed by the lions. It was the will of the lions to eat up Daniel. It was the will of those men who accused Daniel to be destroyed by, 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 by the lions. So look at the number of people that God altered their will because of Daniel. May the Lord alter, change, frustrate the will of everyone, whether beasts or spirits or human beings. May the Lord alter their will, their evil desires concerning your life. May the Lord alter it, turn it around in line with his own will. And may the will of God alone stand in your life and not the will of the wicked. Not the will of those who hate you. Not the will of those who want to see you cry or destroy. Therefore, child of God, everything the enemy has done or set up in your life be reversed. And may the will of God stand in your life. Everything that is dead in your life should receive life. Now, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything the enemy has destroyed or stolen from you, be recovered and restored back to you. Our God is God of restoration. The God help recover and restore back to you. 
Every single thing, the wicked ones have stolen from you. Whether it's your peace, your joy, your glory, your properties, the Lord recover them and restore them back to you in the mighty name of the Lord. The Lord caused the serpent to vomit the fish, the marine devil to vomit that which they have swallowed up. The Lord cast out your wet out of the mouth of the Leviathan in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bring you out from whatever grave the new thing they have buried you. It's not your time to be forgotten. Hallelujah. So grave cannot keep you forever. Whatever part of your life or business have been buried, I speak to them by the word of the Lord. That the grave be opened by the word of the Lord and I command that which are buried to come back alive. And may the glory of God be seen in your life. And may your testimony, yes, draw men to God, to the kingdom of our God in Jesus' mighty name. May people come to know God because of what the Lord has done for you. Yes. May people come to know God. Yes. Yes. Because of what the Lord has done in your life. May God alone be glorified. May the devils and their agents never be glorified. So all the crookedness and all the potholes, all the waters, all the whatever mountain they have set up on your way, all the manipulations that is going on, manipulating the mind of people, setting up government agents or government against you to trouble your life, to cause you to be, to, to be whatever, to sorrow. The Lord alter everyone of such right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord put the wicked to shame. The Lord the thunder from heaven upon their evil altars and their palaces and their covens. May the glory of the Lord rest upon you. Child of God, receive life. The Bible says it is the will of God for you to prosper. So child of God, begin to prosper. Be it unto you according to the will of God. He said it is the will of God for you to prosper and to be in health as your soul prospers. So whatever God has not planted in your life, I command it to wither up, to die, to dry up, and thrown out of your life and go back to hell in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord give you grace to stand. May the Lord give you grace to rejoice. May the Lord give you grace to understand that this is the will of God. And for it to be thankful, may thanksgiving never cease from your mouth. Child of God, receive hope. Be hopeful. Be hopeful because Jesus is your Lord. Be hopeful because the Most High God is your keeper. Yes, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the wicked be disappointed. Those who want to see you disappointed, may they be disappointed. Yes, that's right. In the name of Jesus, all the demonic hosts, the principal, the Bible says we wrestle against principal, we not against flesh and blood, but against principal, against power. All the principalities, all the powers of darkness, the rulers of the darkness of this world, all of them, whether they are gathered, wherever they are gathered, whether in the heavens, on the earth, in the sea, in the ocean, in the river, wherever they are gathered, to exact their will upon you. May the Lord disappoint them, frustrate them, and stop them in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord who turned Sennacherib back and destroyed Sennacherib in his own house, in the house of his God, his God couldn't help him. May the Lord turn the enemies back to where they're coming from. Yes. And everything they have directed into the mind of people against you, the Lord disappointed them, the Lord frustrated them. Every handwriting that you written, the signatures that the Lord utters, the signature of the kings, Darius himself. Huh? The signature of the people, his laws. Huh? The Bible said it was signed according to the laws of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be altered. The Lord that altered those laws, alter every satanic law that has passed over your life. Child of God, you shall live and not die. The will of God be established in your life. May you go from here filled with God's glory and God and God's and God's light and God's favor. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every pit that is dug for you. Yes. May the wicked be buried in their own pit in Jesus' mighty name. And those who threw Daniel into the lion's den were devoured, eaten up by the lion. So those that drew, dug the pit, may they be buried in their own pit. And every stone that has been cast against you, 
thrown at you. Boomerang upon the wicked. Every evil arrow return back to the sender in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The evil the enemy want to see happen to you. May the Lord return it back to the sender. Hallelujah. And may your life be filled with God's glory and God's peace. I speak peace of God upon you. I speak peace of God upon your life, upon your business, upon your job, upon your marriage, upon you. I speak peace of God all around you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So may the Lord keep you perfect picture of God. Listen to me, my friend. If you have heard this message and you have not given your life, don't give your life to Christ now. You heard the testimony. You heard the, you heard the testimony of King Darius. He said there is no other God but the God of Daniel, the living God. Yes. Surrender to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus right now. And give up, give up all those evil ways. And listen to me, child of God. You have heard this message. Put yourself in the place where God will always help you. Repent of every evil, every sin. Don't entertain sin in your life. Keep off from idolatry. Keep off from unbelief. Don't doubt God. Don't doubt God. He said because Daniel believed in his God. That was why God said, child of God, don't doubt God. Believe that God will do whatever he has promised to do for you. Understand his will. God will not disappoint you, child of God. God will not disappoint you. So why not just pray for yourself before we run down? Pray, pray for yourself. Tell God, I believe in you, Lord. Let your will alone be done in my life. Let your will be done in my life. It doesn't matter what the enemies have done or doing. Lord, may you alter their laws. May you alter their decree. May you disappoint. May you frustrate their will. All that the enemy will to see happen to me, my father, may they never happen. Your will alone be done in my life. May your will be done on this earth. May your will be done in my business, in my family, as it is in heaven, oh God. Child of God, pray for yourself. Commit yourself into the hands of God. The Bible says Jesus committed himself into the hands of God. God did not disappoint him. You know, Paul said he is fully persuaded that God is able to keep that which is committed into his hand. Child of God, commit your life, your business, your property, your job, everything into the hands of God. God will not disappoint you. And I pray that the Lord God Almighty, into whose hand you have put your life, your business, your family, your job, your career, your finances, may the Lord keep you in perfect peace. May the Lord surround you. May the Lord protect and preserve you. May the Lord grant that the end will not be able to break in into your life to rob or deny you or deprive you of your properties. May every beast, every chariot of the enemy be used against you, be slain and be cut to pieces and destroyed by fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord grant you favor before all men. Every lie, the devils have lied. It programmed into the, projected into the mind of people to cause men to hate you, to cause people to fight you, to trouble you. May the Lord forsake all those lies and all those falsehoods in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, may the Lord grant you great peace and uncommon favor before all men. So that we translate on common blessings and promotions and increase in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I say thank you for answer to this prayer. Take all the glory and all the honor, Lord, for the lives of your children that, Daddy, you are keeping in perfect peace. Yes, and for providing and, and, and for lifting up your children, O oh God, from whatever the enemy has done against them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. I say, child of God, it is well with you. It is well with you. You are blessed. Hallelujah. Expect the best. Expect the best. Be grateful to God. Be thankful to God. Yes, that God is working out something great and wonderful on your behalf. Always be thankful. Hallelujah. I say in every session, be thankful to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, child of God, as we come to the end of this, I want to encourage you again on Sunday. Please join us. Okay, if you are in Lagos, the address of the church is there. Be with us. If you are not in Lagos, connect with us online. Amen. And you shall be blessed. Hallelujah. God is doing something great in grace for all ministries. Hallelujah. And child of God, come and worship and serve the Lord. Your coming will not be in vain. Time again is 9 o'clock Nigerian time. Hallelujah. Coming Wednesday, another midweek service. So I invite you to be there. Easter, we have. Easter, the Easter holidays, we have a season of refreshing. The theme of this year's meeting is the cross and the realities of life. The realities of life. The realities of life. The cross. You know, I mean, it's going to be wonderful. Saturday, which is going to be the 8th, is going to be a business seminar. 
We trust that God will use the various speakers to, to teach you on entrepreneurship and how to, you know, how to make the best, you know, in this particular season that we are in, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So look forward to these meetings and be sure that the days are marked out and you are there. Hallelujah. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. I look forward to seeing you in all the meetings. Your coming shall not be in vain. Expect your miracles as you come. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So before we leave, I encourage you to give again. So to the ministry, hallelujah. God will bless your giving. So I pray that the Lord will open doors of financial increase to you. Hallelujah. I pray the Lord will give you durable riches. I pray the Lord touch the heart of men to favor you. I pray that your promotion come to you now. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that every door of business that the enemy has shut against should be opened in the mind because that's not the will of God for you. It is the will of God for you to prosper. It is the will of God for you to, 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 to make profit in your business. I pray that every plan of the enemy concerning your finances your, to make you poor, to make you financially, you know, trapped. You know, the Lord frustrate all those plans on the arrangements in the name of Jesus Christ. Every difficulty, challenge, every program projected into your life, the Lord frustrate them and return back those things back to the enemy in Jesus' name. You are blessed, child of God. You are not cursed. So may the blessing of God rest upon you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. While the curses return back to the sender. For God said, we cause them that curse you and bless them that bless you. So I say you are blessed and may you remain and continue God's blessing in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So child of God, as we come to the end of the meeting, I want to say, until I meet you again, remain blessed, stay safe, amen, stay safe. God is working on something in Nigeria. The will of God alone shall be done in Nigeria. Hallelujah. So we should all rejoice and don't look, because God is a just God. God will work out what people will know and fear the Lord God Almighty in that nation. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So until we meet again, I say to you, Stay safe. Put yourself in a place where God will fight for you. Keep away from trouble. Stay safe. Stay blessed. <laughs> you are blessed. So remain blessed. And be thankful to God. And then above all, stay rapturable. Jesus is coming again. Hallelujah. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.